welcome everybody back to Conversations of Future Air Mobility. I'm thrilled that this next conversation here, uh, we get a chance to talk to Svillen at Dronamics. I mean, Dronamics is one of the leaders in the cargo drone business. We want to hear more about us. Tell us, what are you doing? Thank you, thanks. It's great to be here. Uh, we've been working on this for almost eight years now. Um, we're building a cargo drone that can carry 350 kilograms, or about 800 pounds, at a distance of up to 2,500 kilometers, so about 1,500 miles. So, um, and the reason why we, we, we decided to develop that is we looked at all the airframes that existed on the market and we realized there's a big gap and um, no one was really creating airplanes specifically for the cargo uh, world. So we set out to do just that. And, you know, with my brother's aerospace engineering background and my background in economics, we just felt that uh, uh, we have the right match to, to, to tackle that. And of course, now we're like 140 people and growing. So it's been a long journey. That's exciting. So is the, the benefit here specifically designing for cargo, no pilots on board, that you're going to can bring costs down? So what, yeah. what kind of cost uh, savings are you projecting compared so, to today's solution? So, so, so actually, uh, s several times uh, cheaper than existing air freight. Um, and we achieved that precisely mostly f through the airframe and the fact that our pilots don't travel with the vehicle. So we do st still have pilots and they need to be commercially trained. Uh, uh, and, uh, and we operate just like another airline, except our crews stay on the ground. And the, the, if you think about flying, it's so unnatural to fly. You need to be optimized to that one mission. If you start thinking about several missions, you kind of, the economics go crazy. So uh, th that was the big um, realization. We need to create it just for that one type of cargo, that one type of payload, and that's uh, parcels cargo. So that, that sounds very compelling. You've obviously reached out to some of the players in the industry. What's been, what's been the uh, response from the potential customers? Oh, it's, very, it's been very, very excited uh, response. Uh, we're already working with companies like DHL, with Hellman, and some other Fortune 500 uh, customers to roll this out. Uh, we'll, we're in the middle of the uh, ground and flight testing campaign uh, right now, so before the end of the year, uh, we'll have the first flights and uh, first customer cargo as well. Wow, before the end of 2022? Yes, yeah. And uh, actually, just last month, we, we became the first cargo drone airline to receive a license uh, in Europe. Uh, so we're now licensed, and as soon as our testing program is complete, we can start generating revenue for customers and actually, most importantly, helping them deliver same day uh, over long distances to communities that are not served currently. Interesting. So this point of certification and regulation is always a big one when we talk about drones, right? Tell us how you're approaching it and why you're confident that, you know, you can get there. So, first of all, while we do make a lot of innovation on the airframe side, there's a lot of things we have chosen to take existing technology on. So, for example, the engine is already certified. We're not electric. Um, we're using an existing engine uh, and that shortens the certification path. Uh, there's a lot of the other components as well. And, and the whole um, uh, premise that we're actually serving as not just the developer, but also the operator. So um, it's not like the, you, you know, once you sell a vehicle, um, the operator may introduce additional risk by just doing whatever the heck they please. Uh, in our case, we're also the operator, so we're very mindful of how we would operate that. But most importantly, we're flying in very um, precise environment between existing airfields uh, in controlled airspace. So all these things, they do uh, decrease the risk. So that sounds like you're going to be on IFR flight plans between existing airports, exactly. using existing infrastructure, really just taking the pilot off the aircraft on the ground. Yeah. Is that the way to think about it? Yeah, exactly. We could have, we could have you know, uh, started reinventing a lot of things on the propulsion side or uh, other things. And we know that eventually uh, all these sustainable initiatives will get there, for sure. We're also thinking about them as well. But um, the key is, what is it that we can plug into the existing ecosystem as much as possible so that we can start serving customers now, prove out the model, prove out the operations, and then get the flywheel going. Great. Well, that sounds very exciting. So tell us a little bit more about the airframe and the aircraft. So conventional aircraft, you know, we talked about the, the payload, but you know, how do you manufacture it? How do you, you know, what are the components? Is carbon fiber? Tell, tell us more. Sure. Yeah. So it's a, it's a fixed wing uh, drone. So um, it, it's eight meters long fuselage, uh, 16 meters wing uh, span, and it's about one ton total vehicle. It's carbon fiber structure. Um, operates on uh, gasoline, 
um, which is actually helpful, especially in those more remote areas. Um, and yeah, we, we do the, we, we have a team in Bulgaria that's uh, doing most of the R&D and uh, all the initial prototyping. So uh, the first units are being built there. But actually just yesterday we announced uh, our first manufacturing partner who, uh, who is uh, Quickstep uh, from Australia. And uh, as besides Europe, Australia is a really key market for us. Uh, we're very excited to partner with existing manufacturers to produce our designs. But again, with the view that we'll be also only the, the single operator of, of, of that production and then uh, sell the capacity to, to customers. You, you earlier mentioned you're going to have pilots on the ground and they're commercial pilots. Tell us a little bit more about what that looks like. Are they the same pilots that fly? Is it a different training progress? How, how, do, how does that look? So, so, so we're working with uh, commercially trained pilots. Uh, so commercial pilots, uh, in, in fact, the directors of our flight operations for our teams in Europe and Australia, um, they have you know, more than 10,000 hours each um, on big commercial airplanes. And uh, it's important to have this uh, view and, and, and that this is just like another airline, so so we couldn't allow ourselves to just have, let's say, a teenager pass a drone course online in two hours and then go and operate such a big machine. Um, at the same time, um, there is uh, a program that we're developing with Flight Safety International uh, to help commercial pilots to, to be trained on our airframe. We have a simulator as well that uh, they can um, th th they can fly on and small scale models. So uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be just like with another airline. You need to pass some training, but your CPO is uh, what matters a lot for us as well. OK, great. Well, look, this sounds like a fantastic future. Is there any big misconceptions that you see out there that you would love to clear up around cargo drones? Yeah, uh, well, I think the whole market has really focused on vertical takeoff. I think. Um, <clears throat> that's great and a, and a great value add, but in reality, if you do want to um, serve a community, that community is going to have needs today and tomorrow and the day after and, and so on. So you would <clears throat> necessarily actually um, build out that ground infrastructure. So um, the fact that you may have one runway or, or five verti ports, it may end up being kind of the same, uh, the same thing. Uh, especially when you, once you start running the numbers and looking at on that cargo throughput level. So uh, that, that's something we encounter a lot. Um, but ultimately, there's a reason why there's a lot more airplanes carrying cargo than helicopters nowadays. Uh, and a big part of the reason is it's just more optimized to be fixed wing. So uh, that, that was our thesis eight years ago and it remains now. So that's why we've been successful. Excellent. Well, look, all the best of luck with that. I can't wait to see your, your commercial operations starting and your aircraft flying and uh, very much looking forward to following you over the coming years. Thanks so much for making the time for the discussion. Thank you.